the first two verses of chapter 6. And it sort of falls all in line with um, what we've been going over in chapter 5 as far as roles and um, yeah, people within, within the you know, household and framework of God. Um, yeah, so let's go over the first Let's go over the first two, cha- uh, two verses here. It says, All slaves should show full respect for their masters so they will not bring shame on the name of God and his teaching. If the masters are believers, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. Those slaves should work all the harder because their efforts are helping other believers who are well loved. Okay, so sort of went through an evolution of thought like as I was preparing the sermon and stuff and at first, I was like, um, I had a bunch of notes and stuff on like the the history of of slavery and how it played a role and stuff um, within within um, Christianity and how it all started and kind of how it was it was it was just a you know it was a fact that it was part of like culture and the economy of things. So I was sort of like losing my way over time, and I was I was. Um, getting lost in my thought process on what I wanted my folks to be, but I just want to, um, you know, give a brief, give a brief summary of that. Um, so, yes, slavery existed within, within um, this time frame and even before that, and it was, it was part of, part of um, the economy, you know. Slaves would, and God even used slavery for, you know, his benefit, we know that because of the Israelites and stuff. Um, it existed even, even way before, in like the time of Job. He talks, about, he talks about his servants and how he would treat them right and stuff. But, um, but Paul isn't writing to, um, you know, condemn slavery, and, and Christ never spoke about that either. Um, Paul is writing to, like, the attitudes of, of those people, though. Um, he is... He's not like calling for a, um, you know, like a violent revolution or overthrow of, of the institution, but instead he's, he's, um, he's challenging those people in those roles and, and how they view themselves in those roles and once they accept Christ in their lives. So Paul's not, Paul's not um, condemning the institution. He's not, he's not asking you know, slaves to rise against their masters or anything. He's, he's challenging what their, what their mentality and, and attitude is um, in their roles. Um, we know, we know, we know today, like, we, we associate it um, in the negative, you know, like we, in our, in our own country and stuff, has a pretty terrible um, understanding and whatever of slavery, you know, over time. But we know, and we've gone over many times, like the term, the term used in scripture and in like regards to Christ and stuff and, and what our calling is. Um, doulos, doulos, that's how you pronounce it, doulos. Um, being a, a bond servant, like willingly committing yourself. Um, the same term is used, used again in, the, in, in these first two verses. Um, so yeah. It's not, so it's just important to, it's important to be, like, in the right, like, mentality when, when we go over scripture, you know, like, don't become, um, whatever, like, jaded by our own understanding, jaded, I don't know if that's the right term, but, like, don't allow our own, like, understanding through our own history and stuff and what we've been taught in school and, and whatever to, like, affect what scripture says about it because different terms are used and the definition is even different, Okay. So it's just important to like be in that when we're talking about scripture. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, I'll leave it at that. There's that water splash. So Paul talks about this um, many times, actually, throughout throughout his letters to the different churches and stuff. And it's interesting how he always, it's always in like the context of, of um, like the household and stuff. And you, you'll see that all over the place. And like I said, even in, 
even in um, when Job, like, you know, when he's, you know, like lamenting to God, it's even in the context of like the household. Um, wow, I totally just like lost my track. Um, yeah, it's, it's just interesting to note that it's always, always within that context. And again, it is here. You know, we're talking about roles within, within the body of Christ. Um, elders and deacons and widows and kids. And, and um, yeah, so he's, he always, he always um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pattern we see. Um, and the implication, if we look at the verse, um, is that this verse and, and other, other um, instances in his letters, um, is that when what these people in these roles had a tendency to develop a, an attitude or a, like a behavior once, once they accepted Christ, you know, like, and, um, and he frames it, he kind of frames it in the negative. He says, all, all slaves should show full respect for their masters so they will not bring shame on, on the name of God. Um, so the implication is that these people, like, were developing, um, like, a high and mighty type of attitude and that they didn't need to, like, I don't need to answer to anyone or whatever type thing. Um, or they had, like, a, a righteous indignation about, like, their position in, in society. Um, and Paul is addressing that as to say, like, um, they are not to, like, that they are basically to use it. They're, they're to use it um, to glorify God and not, not be, like, um, bitter or whatever or looking to overthrow um, you know, overthrow the authority and stuff. And we talk about that a lot, about how God uses, uses authority in appropriate ways. Um, and, that, and, if, and if the slaves were developing that attitude, it would ignore God's, like, economy and structure um, and whatnot. And he, and he uses it, like I said, again, in, in the home or in the church or, you know, the workplace or whatever. So our, even though we all are, you know, united in Christ, it doesn't... Um, eliminate God's order of that, of those things. So he's highlighting, he's highlighting, like I said, again, the opportunity that um, even a slave could have um, to glorify God and stuff. And, And we've gone over, we've gone over the different roles and stuff and how the widows would glorify God and how our responsibility as like caretakers of those people will glorify God in those ways and how the elders and deacons glorify God in their roles and stuff and how we should treat them and stuff. So he's saying again that these people have an opportunity within what they do to, to glorify God. Does she know where to go for awesome times? Okay. <laughs> um, Yeah, right, right service, right attitude, um, proper suffering, and stuff like that. Um, Paul, is, Paul is challenging. It's, it's a challenge to these people um, to use, use their position, you know, um, to glorify God and to not develop, like, this, this attitude about it. Um, you know, I was, thinking, I was thinking about it last night and this morning about myself um, and how it relates to me. Um, so like you all know, like when I got my most recent job, I was like very like upfront about what I won't do because how it would affect like um, my like calling and my stuff here and my like commitment to the church and stuff. Um, so we're talking about the workplace now. The workplace, wow, I'm jumping all over the place. The workplace is the most like um, obvious and relatable example um, for us today. You know, like we're. We're servants to, you know, companies or whatever, you know, our bosses or whatever job we have. We are, like, at, at their um, disposal, I guess, if you will. So I was thinking about how it relates to me. And so, you know, when I first got hired, I was, like, very upfront. And I had, like, really good intentions about it. Like, I didn't want my job or whatever to affect my calling here. And I think that that's good and it's right. But I noticed, like over time and even still like now like it's something I struggle with um, it can lead to like a an, an attitude about it like um, 
you're sort of checked out before you even go in, into that environment. You know, like, I don't care about this because I, you know, I'm more interested in serving God. And it's sort of like that thing that, you know, has always pointed out to me that I see, that I do things with, like, blinders on and I don't see, like, a bigger picture. Um, so it can lead, even though I had, like, good intentions about <coughs> my, my calling, my God's, God's calling to me and, like, what I wanted to do for Alethea and stuff, it started to develop, a, like, a behavior um, of, like, being checked out and not utilizing not utilizing that platform that God has given me in, like, my job and stuff. And so he's saying the same thing about these slaves. Like, they've accepted Christ, and now they have a, a bigger picture of things, and they have a, you know, a higher standard and a, and a calling, but are they using, are they using their, their role, you know, even if, are they using their role of being a slave as, as the platform to, to glorify him? He's, he's challenging him in that way, and and like I said, it was something that I noticed myself, like, um, sort of developing that behavior. Now, I don't go to work every day, like, pissed off or, you know, like, not wanting to go. But I, I noticed that it is easy to, like, fall into that um, sort of attitude of being, of being checked out and not, like, not doing every... Like we talked about it um, when Colin was, when was preaching, um, the freedom in Christ we have and how we're supposed to, you know think about that, like everything we do is supposed to be for, for God and for Christ. Um, and so are we using that platform to, to do that? You know, like I said, the most obvious example for us today in society is, is like the workplace. But I mean, I don't know if Gio's awake right now, but you know, like people in school or like in your own household and stuff, like are you using, and in, even in the church, you know, even more so, he says, he says, Paul says, um, if the masters are believers, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. Those slaves should work all the harder. Are we, are, <laughs> are we, are we, do we have that attitude within, within the church too? Like, are we, are we like intentful and, um, what's it called? Like doing, doing everything to serve God. In Ephesians I really liked like um, contrasting, not contrasting, but like using Ephesians to sort of, um, you know, like cement the the whole um, theme and concept of what's going on. But again, in Ephesians six, I'll read it to you quick. It's right after he talks about again, like I said, the you know, like childrens and parents and the economy of things of how it's supposed to work. Um, he says, "Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ." Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. With, work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. And so I really like, I really like using that to like think about um, as we go out and as we like use these, um, you know, whether it be like in our activism or in our workplace or in, you know, the church, are we, are we like doing everything we do um, as if we were working for Christ? Because that's what we're doing, you know? Are we seeing, like, are we seeing it as an opportunity to work for Christ instead of like for the people or, you know, for the man or whatever? Um, or are we like, are we developing like attitudes about it, you know, and like being checked out as we go out into the world? Um, that's what Paul is saying. And, I really like Ephesians because of his, like, you know, word choice. You know, working with enthusiasm and, and sincerity. Um, so, yeah. And, and you know, like, like we're talking about slaves, um, like a low cultural position here. But, you know, we've, we've talked about people in, like, a higher position elders and deacons and how they're supposed to use that too. Um, so it's not, it's not just relevant to like the little guy or something, you know, and not just a challenge for them, you know, whether you're like a grade 50 IRS employee or whatever, whatever grade it just they go up to, or you're like a cart jockey at Safeway, you know, like you're supposed to use the platforms God gives you and you're supposed to work with like all the sincerity um, as if you were working for Christ. And that's Paul's challenge um, to, the, to the people, um, to the slaves who, 
you know, would through through the indications of what he's saying and um, implications. Sorry, that's his challenge to those people um, who seem to be, um, yeah, developing that that mentality of being of checked out or whatever. And then just to just to like you know throw back to Daniel like we like to do this year. I don't know if um, we already talked about this like through like sermons and stuff. Honestly, things get so jumbled up between firewalkers and sermons and Bible studies and whatever. It's like a big wad of thought in my head that I can never like distinguish where it came from or when we talked about it. But Daniel, you know, Daniel had a he was awesome. He was like the awesome slave. Um, he had a higher understanding and, and maturity. Aha, maturity. There's our, there's our buzzword for the year. But Daniel had a maturity that was, that was right and righteous. Um, he was under, you know, he was a slave in Babylon. And he served, he served the king um, with sincerity and, and uh, you know, he, when it didn't violate God, he would serve. He would serve the king with sincerity. You know, he's interpreting dreams, um, and like, I think at one point in like Daniel six or something, it s- says something like he he wept or something when he heard about the consequences that was coming for the king. You know, so he's he works and he serves with all sincerity, like he's serving Christ. And even if that means you know like feeling, I think we did talk about it in, in sermon because it was like conviction or something, or not conviction, but yeah, anyways, so yeah, Daniel's an awesome, awesome example of, of what Paul is talking about, um, he wasn't like, he wasn't like checked out when, when they went into, when they went into captivity or whatever, he, he served with sincerity, um, and again, that's, this, that's an issue of maturity, and like I said about myself, it's something that I realize is easy to fall into, you know, I'm so, like, I have good intentions of, like, in my, like, when I went into my job or go into my job on a daily basis that, like, this is just to provide me the means to serve, serve, you know, Aletheia. But I'm, like, not always, um, not always realizing it as the opportunity to serve Christ, like, and be in the world and not of the world, you know, like we talk about. Um, so it's an easy, it's an easy behavior to, um, like fall into, and that's what Paul is reminding us of of us here again. So, is your maturity at that level? And it's something that you know I'm still learning, and I appreciate. Um, so, how are we? How are we slaves or servants in the workplace? Um, how do we act in the environments and roles God has placed us in? And how can we be better in those, in those environments and roles? Do we view those roles and environments as an opportunity to glorify and highlight Christ? Or do we go into things checked out or not really invested? Um, you know, these are the things Paul's, Paul's challenging the slaves at time, challenging us for now. Um, yeah, do we see it as an opportunity to glorify God instead of, you know, like sticking it to whoever, you know? So these are the things we should talk about in cell group.